Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon. My name is Adam. I am your host that knows nothing. We are here with the great Alex Deacon, the Deacon of Real Estate. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm doing great. I am the great, and I'm doing great. <laughs> the great has spoken. My head's going to be so big after your uh, intro that I'm not going to be able to fit out the door. I think that's part of my job, right? Just inflate egos here. That's that's my job. And let's get some cheap plugs out of the way first, guys. Um, what we want to talk about, uh, go to our website, dhrea.com. You'll find blogs on there with these recordings and a whole lot of other recordings, uh, including Ian Hoover's Realtor Nation, listings, blog posts, uh, etc. Um, you'll see all of our agents on there. You can find our listings on there as well. Um, search Deacon Hoover on all your social media sites, your Instagrams, your Facebooks, your Twitters, your you know, wherever, you'll find Deacon Hoover there. YouTube, uh, meetup.com. Find Alex Deacon on meetup.com. He has two different groups uh, that meet once a month. One's a Pittsburgh landlording group, and one is a real estate investing networking group. They're free, they're fantastic, and they always get really large crowds. Uh, Deacon Hoover Real Estate Advisors is obviously what we're always promoting here, uh, along with Mace Property Management. And you can reach Alex at alex at alexdeacon.com. I think I covered us there, sir. That was good. I Very think good. I covered us there, sir. So let's get to the show. Um, today, Alex, you wanted to talk about home inspections and flips. Yeah, just because I'm de- we're doing probably six or seven flips right now that are closing. You know, we, we started, we finished them, we put them on the market. They they went under contract. or closing and just had a myriad. And I've been doing this a while, and I still had a myriad of issues that. I should have maybe been more cognizant of that could have potentially saved me some money and time and effort and all that good stuff. And yeah. and and so I just wanted to pass those stories along so to help the, the average guy doing an, uh, their own flip. Or gal. Guy or gal. There sure. we go. There we go. So these are quick reference points. Almost like uh, going back to the fundamentals and not, not forgetting where you were, so to, you know, so to speak. Yes. So... We could start with one that, uh, well, that we, we, I'm not even going to go into like specific ones, but we, we may or may not. But like when you're when you're buying a property and you're assessing it, you're not even buying it. You're just going out to look at it to assess it, to evaluate. Do I want to purchase this? And what's the the steps that most people do when they look? Is they look at the condition, they look at the market value, they look at what it's going to sell for after they do all the specific upgrades that they're going to do. So they're going to look at, that's called the ARV, the after repair value. And then they're going to calculate based on what they have to pay for it, what they have to do to it, what they're going to sell it for, how much is it going to cost to hold it, and how much is it going to cost to sell, what's their profit going to be. Okay, that's typically what I do, and that's typically what uh, an average investor is going to do. The, the one caveat to that is you need to look at the home also through the buyer's eyes and through the home inspector's eyes because you could have, first of all, five different home inspectors come up with five different things. So you got to kind of start to learn what to look for that the homeowners are going to be concerned with and even more importantly than that, what the home inspector is going to find and then what the home inspector is going to alert the buyer to that could be a major or minor issue. And this is all relative to how the buyer takes the information and how the information is given to the buyer by the home inspector. You can't control that, right? You right. can't control what the home inspector write down and how they convey the Correct. message. If they scare the buyer and it's... A younger couple and they've never bought a home before and they're on a shoestring budget every little thing that he says could implode the deal right and how he expresses that to the buyer you can't control that what you can control is certain aspects of the house that could or could not come up on a home inspection so for example usually the houses i buy you know they're vacant they've been vacant for a while they need a lot of work and sometimes a vacant house doesn't have any airflow through it. It's been closed up. There's maybe some dampness in the basement. That dampness can turn into mold. Not really a, a, a hazardous situation, a health situation, but there could be a fine film of mold all throughout the basement and throughout the house that literally could just be wiped off and 
clean with bleach and, and water and everything's fine. So we recently did one and I, I told my contractor to clean all the mold. And you know what, he did a pretty good job, but he still missed some. And the home inspector found this light film of mold that's literally just a, it's not an unsafe issue. The buyer wasn't too concerned with it, but it was one thing that came up that the home inspector found evidence of uh, a light mold that's not a huge issue. And fortunately for me, the buyer didn't take it like a huge issue. Right, right. But I've had that happen. So if my contractor would have been more thorough and maybe I should have gone back over there and looked completely throughout that house with a flashlight through every nook and cranny in the basement to make sure all the mold was wiped off and cleaned. I didn't do that. Fortunately, in this case, it didn't come up to bite me in the rear, but sometimes it does. So that's one thing you need to look at um, and account for budget-wise. Another thing, a furnace. So. The furnace on this specific property, it looked okay. It worked. It was fine as far as I was concerned. I didn't have anybody look at it or evaluate it. The home inspector found that it wasn't drafting correctly, so meaning it was emitting potential carbon monoxide levels that could be hazardous. Mm. So I had to replace the furnace because they found that the furnace was bad due to a component in the furnace that it costs too much to fix. You might as well just replace it. Right. Now, because I had to hurry up and get that replaced before closing, I perhaps could have averted that issue from the beginning. I would have had a, a furnace person check it out, spend $150 to have it checked out, found that there was an issue, and I might have been able to get it repaired for less because I had time to find the part or whatever. Or we could have gone with a different option. We could have gone with perhaps, uh, let's say perhaps it was just the chimney that was bad. Then I could have fixed the chimney and maybe for a thousand dollars I could have created a safe condition house, a good furnace that was going to pass a home inspection. It would have been cool and everything. Instead, it's going to cost me $2,200 and I have to rush to get it done. So I don't really have time to get estimates and, right. and so on and so forth. Um, so stay ahead of the problem, stay ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. have somebody check out the furnace for right. you and do a carbon monoxide check on it and so on and so forth. Another thing that you're going to need to evaluate is now sewer lines are becoming more and more prevalent to have a sewer line camera inspection. I would say half of the buyers today are having the sewer line camera to inspect it. And five years ago, that was non-existent. Mm -hmm. That didn't exist. You didn't do sewer line camera inspections. Okay. But now, because municipalities are requiring it on some some boroughs and some townships require it to be cameraed, it seems to be now that the agents are pushing to have it done because they're covering their liability. Right. Oh, you didn't tell me to have the sewer line cameraed, and it, six months after I moved in, it backed up, and then I had a plumber come out. And a plumber said the sewer line collapsed. Why didn't you tell me to have my home inspector do a sewer line camera right, inspection? Right. So now, when you're doing a flip, you have to be cognizant of that issue. So my so for example, I just I did one recently, and well, we'll go into that on the on the stories. Yes, because yes. we're going to do another segment that just goes into the the storytelling part of it. And I'll I'm going to pick maybe three or four projects we just did in specific things that came up that I know I could have saved money on it and literally cost me probably three or four properties probably cost me fifteen or twenty thousand dollars because I wasn't on top of it. Subconsciously teasing the next episode. I like it. Yeah. Well done. So yeah, sewer line is something that you should maybe have your plumber go out and run a camera down the line. It's gonna be maybe hundred and fifty dollars. Sometimes they're plugged up bad enough where you can't get the camera down the line. So then you can have them hydrojet it where they run high-pressure water down there for two or $300. And they clean out the line and then they do a thorough inspection of it. Um, maybe you want to do that before you put it on the market because if there's any issues there, you have time to get estimates and come up with um, alternative solutions to repair it and make it right. Another thing would be, okay, on, on roofs. If the roof looks like it's marginal, 
okay? And I know what a marginal roof looks like, but some people may not. So a marginal roof, a home inspector is going to condemn it in many cases. They're going to say, for example, uh, this roof has reached the end of its useful life, would suggest having a roofer evaluate it. So now the, t the, the buyer is thinking, oh my gosh, I'm spending $160,000 for this house, and I'm going to have to put a $12,000 roof on it. Because the $12,000 roof that you know is going to cost six, the buyer is budgeting for 12. Right. So, you know, that it can blow things out of proportion. So, if the roof does look marginal, think about getting some estimates now, or at least making a mental note that if this does come up on inspection and I'm budgeting for a $25,000 profit, this does come up on inspection, make a mental note that, yeah, I might be losing six. Not necessarily losing, but I might have to give six to put a new roof on. Otherwise, what happens? The buyer says, I want a new roof. You say, no. The buyer walks. Right. You are stuck with a house that we now know has a marginal roof. And it's probably going to come up on the next inspection. It's going to have to be done anyway. Yeah. So if you don't fix it now, you have to fix it later. And if you fix it later, what happens if it's three months down the road? Probably higher cost, might be out of season, might be, I mean... Who yeah, the market that? could change, right? The go. season could change. You have to hold the property for three more months. Mm -hmm. So now that property that you're selling for 150 that costs you $1,500 a month in hard money loans and taxes and insurance and utilities... Fifteen hundred times three is what? Three. What are we doing with that? Three to forty-five hundred. Forty-five hundred. So that's six thousand. You should have just done it. Right. I just made this mistake. Should have just fixed it and, and moved on. Uh, that's six thousand that you didn't want to do. Well, it turned into three months of holding costs, which is forty-five hundred. Plus, in three months, what did you have to do? Still, still replace the roof. You still have to replace so the roof. So it turned from a six thousand dollar loss, if you look at it as a loss, depending if you made a profit or not, it turned from a six thousand dollar liability to a ten thousand five hundred dollar liability because you just couldn't see the forest through the trees. Right, right. You're trying to cut corners in a way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. So flips are very difficult to do, especially in this market. Everybody wants to do them. Everybody's coming here to do them because they're inexpensive. They can't do a flip in San Francisco because a 900 square foot house there is $600,000 and it needs gutted. Here, you can buy a 1,000 square foot house for 100 grand and sell it for 225 mm -hmm. and it's 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 affordable right. for right. the average investor. So therefore, the margins are slimmer, you have to wait longer to find a good deal and when you do find a deal, you really have to know your numbers because you could put a lot of time and effort and work into a flip and end up breaking even or losing money. And it's a, a lot It's a lot of work, especially if you don't do this all the time. And that's the, where the frustration kicks in, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Yep. So that's the important thing is on home inspections and flip. When you buy a flip, think of the end user and think of what they want. But in this specific like what we're talking about today, this session, we're talking about not just what they want, but what they're going to find and what the home inspector is going to find on the home inspection that's going to end up costing you grief, money, and time. And at least get to start to learn what those items are, and then you can start to uh, cross those hurdles off before it even goes on the market. Right. You know, get those things out of the way. Right. Right. And that's only going to come with time and experience. We could go into just literally days and months of just experience level, and but it'll just come with experience. And it's, as as somebody would be more on the buyer end of things versus the one who's flipping the property, a couple of things that I wrote down was airflow, uh, sewage, and then the other thing was just um, the, you know make sure the 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 home would be sealed so that um, you can have ants you know crawling in all over the place and things like that. Is that something that comes up all the time, or is that or is that usually a foundation issue, or is that situational per house? There are so many things that can come up on a home inspection, but the the hit most people can see, like when you're buying it mm -hmm. as an investor, you can see if it has a crack foundation. You can see if the windows are bad. Right. You can see if the floor is is bad. 
Um, but that's a you do bring up a good point on on a foundation. You do have to take a close look at like a bowed foundation or that you know, sometimes a, a major crack you can see obviously, mm-hmm. but sometimes a wall can be bowed just enough where it's going to fail a home inspection. I've had that happen, and you, you again that's just going to come with with time and expertise. And a lot of times, as an investor, you don't have time or the luxury of being able to have a home inspection done. Right. Because these properties are so hot, they go on the market, and buyers are paying cash as is, Mm -hmm. and you're going to sit back and him haul around and do your research and then come in with a low offer and say, I want to do a home inspection and I'm going to get a mortgage. You're never going to get a house. And it's almost like in the beginning you should walk in with a checklist of things to make sure you hit these bullet points, you mm-hmm. know, especially the high the high dollar items like you said, yeah. sewage, roofing, different things like that. Just because over time it might slip your mind because you think that we all we all think after so many years, oh, I've seen that before. It might not be a problem, you know, mm-hmm. so we just kind of skip over it. I mean, I think that's – we all – it's human nature, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll look at things with like everything, the glass is half full. Mm-hmm. And you have to look at it both ways. You have to be optimistic and positive, but you also have to look at it, the glass is half empty. And that's where you need to be more critical on your initial inspection before you make the offer. But again, you don't have the luxury of being able to have time. You have to make quick decisions and you need to know market value and you need to know all this stuff we talked about. And you need to know what it's going to cost to repair the property, hold it. And you have to make these decisions within hours sometimes. Right. So it's a hard business to get into and be successful at it, especially on a higher, uh, on, a, on a large scale. But just even finding one that's going to make sense and you're going to make money on and learn something and want to do it again is hard. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. So Nothing is. Get, do yeah. the work. At the end of the day, you do the work. Yep. Um, anything else with this one, good sir? I mean, I, I, we covered a lot on this. I, I think we have. We've covered what I wanted to cover. Just be cognizant of, of this specific aspect of um, of when you're buying a flip and what can come of it after it goes on the market and goes under contract. Always be aware. Don't let the ego we spoke of at the beginning of the show, don't let that cloud your vision later on. That's correct. There we go. See, bringing it full circle, baby. All right, so, uh, guys, this has been another edition of uh, Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon. We hope you enjoyed this. We hope you took something from this. Again, all the plugs at the beginning of the show, just go ahead, hit rewind. You can play those back. But make sure you're looking for us all over the place. Search Deacon Hoover Real Estate Advisors. Uh, we have – actually, we hit officially the 100-hour mark when it comes to uh, when it comes to podcasts. So between Alex and Ian Hoover here, uh, there's a ton of content there. Make sure you're checking us out on all the outlets that we can like i said apple Podcasts, uh spreaker stitcher uh i think we are on spotify now so uh for alex for myself and for everyone else here at deacon hoover real estate advisors and mace property management we appreciate your time and we will see you next time